everyone welcome back to another video on my youtube channel so today i'm going to be showing you what's on my ipad i'm going to be showing you guys my wallpaper my app design widgets my productivity apps the other apps on my ipad as well as my favorite ipad features and how to set up shortcuts on your ipad this is my ipad it is the 10th generation ipad in blue and both my case and screen protector will be linked in the description below and since this is the 10th generation iPad, it is compatible with the first generation Apple Pencil, which is shown here, and it's what I use every day. So when you first open up my iPad, I have this cute little cat lock screen that I found off of Pinterest. And when you open up my iPad, you'll see that it is pretty much the same aesthetic. And I only also have one home page because I find it easier for me to navigate and organize. And all of these icons that you see here are also from Pinterest and I will link the board in the description box below. I don't have too many widgets, but for the four photo widgets that you see here, I use an external app called Widgetsmith. So clicking onto any of the photos allows you to access the app and you can add small, medium, or large widgets of your choice to your home screen. The other widgets I have include the clock widget and this one down here is actually the reminders app. So what I do is if you click into it, it's essentially just a list of reminders and then I just put whatever text that I want. So here I have my favorite K-pop idols as well as some of my favorite song lyrics of theirs. Now getting into the apps on my iPad, up on the top row we have my settings and files and on the right of that we have the only game on my iPad which is NCT Zone which as you can probably tell is a game centered around the members of NCT in an alternate universe and if you know the game Cookie Run Kingdom it kind of has a very similar vibe to that because there's so many different things that you can do like as you see I am working on my village and also sending trains and doing other types of missions so this is just a little fun thing that I like to do because I like to procrastinate Following NCT Zone, I have Google Chrome, which is my default browser, and I mostly just use that to search things up during class or do some research. So as you can see here, I have Rise and Anton's dad, Yoon Sung, their Wikipedia pages open because I was learning about them in my Korean popular music elective. Following Google Chrome, we have my emails and then we have Canva, which I mostly use on my computer. So I actually don't really understand why I have it downloaded, but it is what it is. The next to that is Pinterest, which I like to use a lot just to look at cute aesthetic things. And as you can see clearly to use for my lock screen and icons and stuff like that. Then we have the camera app, the Zoom app, and then GoodNotes, which I will get into more later, but essentially it's just my primary note-taking app that I use every day for my classes, homework, etc. Next to GoodNotes is Canvas, which is essentially the learning software that UBC uses and I use for all of my classes. And then next to that is my Notion, which I use for my to-do list, my agenda and calendar, but I'll get more into that later. Then on the bottom row, we have my photos and Spotify, which I don't really use, but whatever. And then YouTube, which what kind of YouTuber would I be if I didn't have YouTube installed on my iPad? I also have a couple of other apps installed, but they're not on my home screen just because I don't use them too often, but I still need them for things like school and work. As I mentioned earlier, one of the apps that I use the most in university is GoodNotes. And what GoodNotes is essentially is it's a note-taking app and I use it for all of my classes and a couple of other things. So here I'm opening up my econ notes, which are actually slides that are given to me by my professor. So when I have slides that I have for notes, what I tend to do is just annotate on top of them. So here what I'm doing is I'm adjusting the highlighter setting and then I'm highlighting this equation, which I find important. And another thing that I'll do is if there's something noticeably important, I'll underline it. Now, if I'm taking my own notes, then I'll tend to title it and also write the material that will be covered in class. But the structure is definitely on a class to class basis. And as you can see here, I have things highlighted, which are also following a key that I've set for myself. So the blue is for definitions. The green is for examples. And as you can see, the red is for key ideas. Another good notes feature that I like to use is inserting photos into my notes, which is particularly helpful if I didn't have the time to write something down or if my professor was giving a really complicated example. What I would do is just enlarge the photo and then annotate on top of it. And this would be really helpful for me because then I could look back on the question later on even after class was over. 
Another feature that I use a lot is the selection tool and that would help me move things around if I ever needed to reorganize anything in my notes and this was actually really helpful for a lot of classes especially math where you have to draw a lot of graphs so I definitely used this a lot when um, I was doing that and if I ever put something in the wrong place I just undo. The final GoodNotes feature that I love using and more people need to know about is the search function. You go to your homepage, type in a keyword, and it'll pull up any note you've written that has that word in it. What's really useful about this is that it also works on your handwriting. I've used this a lot during my Open Notes Stats exam and it was really helpful. I haven't seen too many people talk about this so I thought I would bring it up. My second productivity app is my Notion. I designed it last summer and have been using it every day ever since. On my main dashboard, I have all of my pages on the left and my to-do list on the right, in which I bold tasks that I need to get done today and check off things that I've completed. I have many different pages on my Notion, including my lifestyle calendar for events and other important reminders, my academic calendar for deadlines and assignment due dates, my journal, which I use to just write down anything that I have on my mind, my budgeting, and of course, my YouTube so that I can plan out my videos and structure my posting schedule. The first iPad feature I find useful for students is split screen. All you have to do is select an app, then tap the three dots at the top of the screen, and then select a second app to have a dual screen display. I use this a lot for when I draw and doodle different things, aka procrastinating and not paying attention in class, to look at reference photos, but I also use it when I need to take notes off of lecture slides and don't want to have to use my computer and iPad at the same time. The second iPad feature I use frequently is using my iPad as an external display for my laptop. This is more Apple ecosystem specific, but I like to put my laptop and iPad side by side to do work. Personally, I use the, this the most when doing my stats or quantitative homework, so I can have Excel open on my iPad and the homework questions on my computer, or vice versa. It's a very efficient way for me to complete my assignments. First, open the Shortcuts app, which should already be installed on your Apple device. Go to the All Shortcuts folder and click the plus sign on the top of the screen. In this new window, select Open App as the course of action before choosing the app you want to open. Then, rename your shortcut and press Add to Home Screen. From there, select a photo you want to use as the icon, press Add, and it should appear in your home screen right away. That brings us to the end of the video today, and I wa just wanted to say thank you everyone for tuning in and watching this What's on My iPad video, and I hope you enjoyed watching and maybe learned a few things about what you can do with your own iPad as well. So thank you so much for watching, and if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments and I'll try to answer them as best as I possibly can. And if you would like another follow-up video, please do let me know and I'll consider making one in the future. Thank you again for watching, and I hope to see you in my next video. Bye!